Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to go over how to do a factorial algorithm in Python. I'm going to go through how to do this in two ways. One using for loops and two using while loops. And this is going to be relatively straightforward. Before we leap into Python, I'll just go through the basic logic that I'm going to use in order to do this, just so that we know we're all on the same page about doing these algorithms. So how might this factorial algorithm actually work? Well, the factorial number is, of course, n factorial is equal to n itself multiplied by n minus 1, and so on and so on until we get to 2, until we get to 1. So factorial 5 is 5 by 4 by 3 by 2 by 1, and the like for other numbers. So we can then think about how an algorithm might work. So let's first by starting off by defining a variable, which I'm just going to call var for the sake of argument. We'll define it as 1 to begin with. Then what we're going to do is going to multiply 1 by n. So for example, in factorial 5, what we do is multiply 1 by 5. And then we're going to overwrite our value of var with this new value. So in our factorial 5 example, our first step is to take 1 by 5, and then we rewrite var as being equal to 5. Then in the next step, what we do is we multiply it by n minus 1. So we'll take var, multiply by n minus 1, and then overwrite var with this new value. So in our 5 example, we go 5 multiplied by 4 and then overwrite the variable with 5 by 4, in this case 20. Then we do so on and so on until we get all the way down to 1. So we'd keep iterating and doing this until we get down to 1 and we've exhausted our factorial process. So in our 5 example, we have 5 by 4 by 3 by 2 by 1 until we get to finishing it off. We also need to cross-validate this by making sure that a, negative numbers are not defined and b, factorial 0 is equal to 1. And we need to make sure that that's also going to hold. So we can do this factorial algorithm in two overarching ways. One using for loops and two using while loops. And they're both relatively straightforward once you've seen them for the first couple of times. So with that in mind, let's go into Python and start going through how we'd code up these algorithms. Let's do our factorial algorithm using a for loop. Now the way this is going to work is we're going to need to define a function, then we are going to iterate using a for loop through the factorial algorithm. So what we need to do here is we go def, and then I'll just call it f loop for for function loop. Then it needs to take as an input argument n, being the number for which we want the factorial. Then after we've got this, we need to define a couple of variables. So we're going to define a starting number. The starting number is going to be called r product for this uh, multiplicative or return product. So I'll go with our product is equal to one as my initial variable. However, we are going to iterate through this. So the way I'm going to iterate through it is by using a for loop. So I'll go for, and then I'm going to go for i in range. And then the important part of my range aspect here is I need to iterate down from n, and I need to iterate down from n to one. The way to iterate down from n to one is to take n as my first or maximum range of my argument. I'm going to go from n, and then the next thing is going to be 0. Now, notably here, when you've got 0 as part of your for loop here, it's going to iterate not to 0, but to 1. And the way to iterate downwards is you need to use negative 1. So this is basically telling uh, Python to go iterate from n down to 0, although it will only do 1 above 0, and then it will tell it to go down in intervals of negative 1. So hence why we're iterating in that range. So I'm going for i in this range. Then what I next need to do is I need to go r product. So r product is equal to r product multiplied by i. And this is effectively going to iterate down i here. So it's going to iterate down from 5 to 4 to 3 to 2, etc. So for example, say I'm taking the factorial of 5. What I'll have here is I'll start off with r product is equal to 1. So then r product is next going to become 1 multiplied by 5. Then in the next step of the for loop, it will become 5 multiplied by 4. Then 4 multiplied by 3. Then 3 multiplied by 2. Then 2 multiplied by 1, giving me my factorial output. So that's effectively how my for loop works. Then I need to tell Python to return the value for me. So we go return and then I'll get it to return our product for me. And that's how it's going to work here. So let's see what output it gives me. So say, for example, we want factorial 4. 
what we do is we go back to 4, 4 factorial 4 is equal to f loop, then 4, and we'll need to print out our result. And this is ultimately then going to give me 24, which is the correct answer. That's 4 multiplied by 3, multiplied by 2, multiplied by 1. Let's have a look at what another number gives us. So let's go with factorial 5. So we'll go fact 5 is equal to f loop, then 5, and then we can print that number out. And what you'll see here is it gives me 120, which is the correct answer. 24 multiplied by 5 is equal to 120. We then need to cross-validate if it works for 0 and for negative numbers. So factorial 0 is by definition equal to 1. So let's see what our algorithm gives us when we put in 0. And it will turn out that it will ultimately be working here. So we'll get it to print out the result of factorial 0. So here what we end up with is this equaling to 1. Now the reason this works is we've initially defined our product as being equal to 1. This for loop won't run because n is already equal to 0. So there's nothing for this for loop to do in our particular case. So we're then going to get our function reporting 1 for us. Let's have a look at negative numbers. So I'll go fact n5 just for negative 5 is equal to f loop, then minus 5. And then I'll get it to print out the number for us. And it will turn out that this will not give us the correct answer. So what we do is when we print this out, we end up with 1 as being the answer that is given to us. That is not correct. What we need is for this to not be defined, i.e. it is not equal to 1. So the way we need to do this is by using if statements. So I need to insert if statements into my function here. So what I'll do is I'll go if then n is greater than or equal to 0, I'll get it to do the first portion that we've already written in here which is going to give us the correct answer. Then else, what I need to do is I need to get it to output that this is not defined. So go else, then I'll get it to return, then not defined. Notably here, uh, my Python had messed up my alignment, so I just need to make sure my alignment is absolutely correct here. Then what I can do is I can see whether this gives me the correct answer. So I'll run my code again, and I end up with a syntax error here. And the syntax error is arising because I have not done the correct spacing. So let's see what it looks like again. So when I've done the correct spacing, we end up with 24 as being the first one, then 120 for factorial 5, then 1 for factorial 0, then the factorial of the negative number is not defined, which is exactly what I want. And that's how you'd go through getting your factorial algorithm by using for loops. It is relatively straightforward in the end, however it takes a little bit of getting used to. The next way that we can define our factorial algorithm is by using while loops. Now in order to define the while loop here, what we'll do is we'll define the while loop function, which I'll call w loop, just starting for while loop. Then we'll need to take in as this argument n being the number that we want to get the factorial for. So what I'll next do is I need to define two things. I'm going to again start off with a rolling product which is much like when we have the for loop. And I'll start rolling product off at one. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to define a count variable, which we're going to count for. And we're going to be counting it down from n. So the way I do this is I go count var, and then I'm going to define that as being equal to n to begin with, but we're going to count it down. Then the next thing I do is I go while, then n, well while rather count var is greater than zero, then I'm going to go through effectively an iterative step. I'm going to iterate down the count variable. So in each step here, I'm going to count down from n. So I'm going to take n down from say 10 to 9 to 8 to 7, etc, etc. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to define the rolling product again. So go r product is equal to r product multiplied by count var. So in our first step, say we have factorial 5. What's going to happen here is we're going to take r product is equal to 1 multiplied by 5 in our first step. Then what we need to do is we need to take count variable down by 1. So we'll go count var is equal to count var, which I've already defined, minus 1. So for example, in the factorial 5 case, this would go down from factorial 5, then we'll go down to 4, then to 3, then to 2, then to 1, etc, etc, if we have other operations or other uh, types of numbers we want to do. So we'll go count var here. And this is effectively going to enable us to iterate down our R product. 
Now what we can then do is we can get the w loop to return our product for us, which is effectively going to be our factorial result. So we can see how this works. So let's again go with factorial 4 to begin with. So we'll define fact 4 is equal to w loop, then 4. And then I'll get it to print out fact 4 for us. And we'll see what this looks like. So what we do is we get 24 as before. We can again go with fact uh, 5 if we want to look at what factorial 5 looks like, just to cross validate that it behaves with another number as well. And then we can again print fact 5. Again, it's going to look much like it did beforehand. So again, relatively standard. We then need to cross validate what it does with zero and with negative numbers. So let's go with fact zero first, and we'll see whether it looks like it is behaving properly when we take in zero. And what you'll see here is when it takes in zero, we end up with one being produced, which is exactly what we'd want. This is basically because we are just reporting our product which we had already defined to be one. However, we need to look at what will happen when we take in a negative number. So let's go with negative five for the sake of argument. So fact, and then I'll go with fact n five is equal to w loop negative five. And then I'll get it to print out this for us. So print fact n five, and we'll see what happens here. So when we do this, we ultimately end up with this being defined as one as well. That, however, is not correct. Rather, the factorial of a negative number is undefined. So the way we'd ultimately do this is we need to use if statements. So what we do is we go next, we go down here, and we go if, for example, n is greater than or equal to zero, we'll go through our stages we had before. We then need to indent everything, and then we need to go next, else. Then else, we're going to need it to report out not defined. So we'll just go return, then not defined. And this is going to enable it to behave properly for us. So let's remove our, our console output for the moment and see how this would behave. So what you'll notice here is we have our factorials for our positive numbers as before. We have the factorial for zero being reported as one and the factorial for our negative number is not defined, which is exactly what we would want.